So I got assigned my silk for raids for this cycle and it was a pretty good time. We basically cleared the entire map now and I had some really nice looking fights with her. Um, my first raid I used Gore, my second raid I used Pyramid X. Both of them felt kind of awkward to use and then finally we switched for me to use Silk for this one and it felt really really good actually. So we're going to start off against this Maestro and I took the roll buff where you want to counter as heavy and special attacks to place a weakness. I don't remember the exact name but that's the goal for it and you just place weakness and then it's going to um, enhance how, many, how much damage you're going to do because you're going to get your charges faster. And so Silk is really good for some of these fights because you have that really nice evade to save you because it, I don't know about everyone else but I'm not very good at dexing Maestro's special one or even sometimes Kang's SP2. I don't mess it up too often but sometimes when I do it's very bad like if you get hit by Maestro's SP1 it hurts like very badly so it's a really nice that you have that safety net to always evade his special one as long as you don't have the evade on cooldown so. You can obviously always push him to SP2s if you feel like it, which I do often do quite frequently, but um, if you do let him throw an SP1, then you're basically safe at that point. Um, basically, the rotation I'm doing is just kind of throwing a bunch of SP2s, and if I have a nice Relic lineup, I'm going to be doing that into it. it. The Relic doesn't get extra damage, so it does feel a little bit weird to throw off sometimes, but it doesn't really matter that much. And... Um, so we're just throwing the sp2 here we get some massive crits and basically in raids your cap your damage cap is 12 percent and we're going to hit that very fast as you're about to see um we hit the damage cap right about here yeah so with more than a minute left she already hit the damage cap against maestro which is really really good um I think this is, she's in the same role tactic as Titania and stuff, and there are some other really fast science champs in that tactic, but for me with Silk, it was a really, really good time, really, really easy time, and um, even though there might be better options out there, this was my best option, and it worked really well for me, so I was happy with how that went. So, next up is Thanos, and uh, again, we just kind of want to do his challenges, and then place that weakness and then we're just kind of chilling because we complete all of his challenges we get our extra damage and this is a ramp fight so I'm not gonna have my crazy initial damage like I did against Maestro but it is important that you see a ramp fight so you know exactly what you're doing for if you decide to replicate this so uh, you can see I only have five of my big charges now but that's okay because we're still ramping up um, Assault went before me, so I got a little bit from them, but not too much. So I started with like three, and then uh, that was it. But now we're at six, and we're still gaining more. Still want to complete his challenges. The knockdown one is really easy for her because you can just medium heavy and stuff. You don't even have to worry about that Pierce, the Fury, taking any block damage. It's not that important. You can just literally spam heavies this whole time whenever he asks for a heavy, uh, whenever he asks for a knockdown. And it's really easy for you, just like that. So the dodge special one is going to be the hardest one just because you actually have to force it instead of just kind of throwing a heavy or throwing a light attack. So it's definitely the hardest one to deal with, but also not hard because you just bait a special and you're trying to chillin'. And it's not like in the first iteration of raids where if you didn't complete a challenge extremely fast, it felt very bad. Um, even though with Silk here, you're not taking the extra block damage, you're not taking just massive furies into your block. I, as I say that, I do take it there, but at the same time, you don't have to do it too often, so you don't really have to worry about that. Just because of that heavy chain, making it really easy to get your knockdowns that he asks you to do. So just like that, we're about to run out of time, but we did, I believe, 6% of his health, which is not bad for a ramp-up fight um, in raids. That's half of the cap, and we were still kind of ramping up. So this is going to be the full damage um, with ramp and stuff already. I think I messed up early where I was not ramping up correctly, um, so I'm going to not time out in this fight. We do hit the 12%, but like he doesn't go indestructible because it was just like a fraction of, per of a percent that didn't actually land. So you see me ramping up here, and I wasn't completing that knockdown challenge early for some reason, but now I do it, and we get the light one, and now we're at 19 of our charges, and we're going to start cooking with damage here. So just like that, we're going to throw our SP2, it does a massive amount of damage, didn't even have a lot of physical vulnerabilities up, 
and we have the relic incoming for the next SP2. So we're just doing plenty of damage here. Um, we're gonna throw the relic into the SP2, and just like that, we're just gonna continue to base special attacks after we throw the massive SP2, and you can see so many red numbers, it's really nice to play around with, so. Uh, he asks for a light attack, we throw the light attack, ask for a knockdown, really easy knockdown, just chain it in just like that. One thing that is worth mentioning is that Silk doesn't necessarily benefit from any of the actual rolls because I think one is armor break, one is armor up, one is like weakness and exhaustion. None of those she actually places, but she doesn't need to because she has enough damage with just the weakness from the actual tactic itself. So you don't have to worry about like not having enough damage um, because obviously with Titania she's really good She's because she's placing weaknesses by herself and Silk doesn't even need that. She has enough damage to cap it out on pretty much every fight that you have a little bit of a ramp, ramp done for. Um, so you don't have to worry about not having that weakness in her kit because just enough from the tactic itself is plenty. So I keep calling it tactic because I honestly could not tell you the actual name for it. So just bear with me when I say tactic. I mean whatever gives you your charges and stuff like that. I don't know the names for this stuff. I barely know the names of like tactician, vanguard, and assault. Anyway, so you saw we didn't actually push him into that unstoppable power gain phase, but we did the 12, do 12% 12 if you see the math. Um, it just, there was like a fraction of a percent that didn't trigger to push him into the next one, so we basically capped it, even though the game, like, it was just a little bit off, but um, anyway, next up is Kang. You're going to see me ramp up against this guy first, and then I'm kind of just messing around, countering his enemies with light attacks. Uh, for some reason I was playing raids, like I just play questing content because of how easy they are now. I'm literally just doing a bunch of random nonsense, messing around with the defender, which feels weird. I feel like raids are honestly a little bit too easy, and they were definitely too hard initially, and then they kind of became too easy after that, so hopefully they find a nice balanced medium, um, and maybe a little bit extra rewards. They don't feel that amazing, but they're not that bad either, so... Um, I do like raids now. They were very frustrating on the initial attempt. I think part of that was just because, obviously, they were a lot harder then, and I was using Gore, who just didn't fit well with how the tactics work, especially because damage over time doesn't get boosted, which is actually one change that I really am advocating for, um, making damage over time work, because some champs, like Gore, for exa example, and some other ones I can't even think of initially, um, do actually kind of suck to use because you can't access that extra damage over time damage, so um, Yeah, so and in, in summary, I really do like raids especially in like the second and this is the third iteration I'm really enjoying them, but they do feel a little bit easy and I kind of would like a little bit more difficulty because I'm not even gonna lie AQ feels harder than this and that's pretty bad. I mess up on my AQ path sometimes, um, and I've definitely died sometimes in my AQ path, but that's, it's not like consistently making me be like, oh, I died in AQ, I'm actually gonna lose my mind, but in here I just like never die it feels like, because there's nothing really hard about it, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but at the same time it's just like, okay. There's nothing really challenging in this game mode, but at the same time, I'm not complaining that it's really easy because, you know, sometimes easy is nice, but I would like a little bit extra challenge, especially since this is meant to be AQ but harder and feels easier, so. Um, anyway, that's about to wrap up the video for me. You're just gonna see me take this final Kang fight, and uh, I don't remember where I cap it, but it's um, not as fast as the Maestro fighter I had earlier, but I do cap it pretty close to here. Oh, there it is. Okay, so with 30 seconds left. So that's the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed watching. And if you use Silk yourself in the raids, do tell me about it. And uh, I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.